What's going on, y'all? We're back. Podcast 61. Obviously, the elephant in the room, college basketball, March Madness. Brackets dropped, but it's also, was it free agency? Of the NFL started yeah. yesterday. So, obviously, the biggest name is Aaron Rodgers. Don't have any news on that. But the other biggest news, Chicago Bears trade the number one pick to the Carolina Panthers for two first-round picks, the number nine pick this year, and a first-rounder in 2024, and then two second-round picks, number one six, or number 61 pick this year, and the second-rounder uh, 2025, and wide receiver DJ Moore is going yeah. to the Bears. So, in my opinion, Carolina Panthers are stupid. They just gave up so much for that pick yep. to take. To take a risk, in my eyes. Because if you take Bryce Young, obviously the weight, the shortness, that's going to be there. C.J. Stroud, nobody knows. Will Levis, nobody knows. Anthony Richardson, nobody knows. There's not a perfect number one pick. So yeah. you did all that just to risk everything. But I guess that's the game of football, and that's where you make your money as a GM. So Yeah, I'm, I mean, I don't hate it, but I don't like it either. Yeah, I don't it, like it. It goes both ways. So like with them having the number one pick, who do you think it is that goes first? Bryce Young, probably. I think it's. I, I think CJ Stroud, but <laughs> I could see Bryce Young. Okay. But I've heard a lot of chatter about Anthony Richardson being like a Cam Newton, so obviously that would be awesome if that panned out. But like we've said before, Anthony Richardson yeah. sucks at football. He can jump high. <laughs> that's it. So uh, if I'm them, I would probably take CJ Stroud and take that risk. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, he's already thrown to NFL wide receivers in college. I mean, so is Bryce Young, but. Uh, the size is definitely there. He's six three, six four. So, I mean, in my eyes, that one would make more sense. But uh, yeah, it's insane. It and like it feels like it moves every day. Like the odds of number one pick. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, they just traded their entire future basically. So, basically, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, because um, they they traded a first round and a second round pick this year. So that shocks whoever you plan on getting this year. I hope they plan on trading. They traded for Andy Dalton. Uh, we're not really going to talk about that, that but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just don't really understand it. And DJ Moore now has the most receiving yards ever as a Bear, because, like, now that he's signed there, the mm. the most yards ever in a Bears uniform. So yeah, that's insane. That just says they've had horrible wide receivers. Yeah, I think. That, mm, yeah, I think the. I don't know. The Bears. Um, I mean, there's a chance they can still get Jalen Carter too, with like dropping down, uh, because obviously you know stuffs happened with him. So um, I could see them still getting Jalen Carter, which would be who they would take anyways if they had number one. Right. So they're just going to be able to build around uh, Justin. But um, And then some of the other news is Dolphins trade tight end Hunter Long and a 2023 20, third-round pick for Jalen Ramsey. We talked about it. Needed Huge. him to the Cowboys. But yeah. you got to think the Dolphins are a favorite next year. If they get Tua back oh, healthy. Oh, definitely. I mean, they were already balling this year. Yeah. Uh and then Tua got hurt. If they can get that, that do healthy. Yeah, they kind of went downhill a little bit. But, yeah, huge figure for the Dolphins. Probably see a lot of bandwagons head over there. Um, or just Jalen Ramsey fans in general. Popular spot, though, for bandwagons. I mean, yeah. Because now that they're back. The Dolphins are definitely back. True. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't – can't overlook them. Uh, their defense is getting really strong. Offense is, you know, yeah, pretty good. And I think if, if – Rodgers goes to the Jets. The AFC East has a strong case for the best division in football, I think. And it's weird that the Patriots would be the worst team in it. That that has never happened in our entire life. I mean, it's possible. Yeah. The NFC East was the best division last yes. year. Easily. Record was. Um, and then Austin Eckler re- requests a trade. I have no idea where he could end up. It, it came yeah. out today that he's like starting to like look into these other teams, but uh, wherever he goes, they're getting a dog. Because he's, in my yeah, opinion, sure. he's the most versatile back in the league. Uh, he's obviously a fan favorite for fantasy. He was my, I think he was my first pick this year. Yeah. Like, uh, I had the second pick overall, but, um, yeah, I think he'll be good in any system. Like, it don't matter where he's going. Yeah. Uh, but, he's a very, um, flexible and can kind of do it all guy. Yeah. And then, uh, Jimmy G goes to the Raiders. So, after all the chatter of getting different quarterbacks to the Raiders, Jimmy G is the one they land on. So, yeah. I think that they're actually going to pick a quarterback still, though. I think he's going to be another backup role. Or just maybe start a year, let that guy learn under it. Uh, they have the seventh, eighth pick? I don't remember. But I think they'll still take a quarterback. Yeah, I know a lot of Raiders fans were uh, disappointed because they wanted Aaron. They were hoping yeah. Aaron would go there. And they got Jimmy G. And uh, I don't think people were too happy about that. But 
Oh, Jimmy G's not bad. Like, yeah, he's a good quarterback. It's just I think he's more, in my opinion, he's more of a system guy. Yeah. That it worked perfect in San Fran, uh, because of what was built around him and who his coach was. True. So uh, yeah, he has to have his own system. He and has to fit uh, into a system. I think I mean McDaniel's is a good coach, but I don't know. I just don't see. Yeah. Obviously, you've got a guy that in his prime was probably the number one receiver in the league. Uh, but they might lose Josh Jacobs, which that'll Ooh, happen soon. It's a big loss. Yeah, that would be a huge loss. So, um, yeah, it's just it's a tough spot for him because he's going from like one of the most loaded <coughs> rosters to the Raiders, and they're playing in the same division as the Chargers and the Super Bowl winners. Yeah. So it's just a rough spot. And then Darren Waller is going to the Giants, uh, but that that one I actually like because I, I'm a huge Darren Waller fan. I think he'll be used. Um, and, I mean, I, I did see Josh Jacobs' tweet. He said, S-H-I-T. He said, crap's sad. So, I think he's, um... Oh, he might, he might be out. Yeah. Or might be looking to get out. Yeah, and there's been all those, all the talks about, um, like, him just getting out anyways. After all the post-game interviews. Yeah. All that. So, uh, yeah, he might be the next one. Yeah. The Raiders are tanking. Fun fact of Darren Waller, though. I saw this on social media. Apparently, he just got married... Yeah, to Kelsey some, Plum. Yes, that yeah. plays for the Las Vegas. What is it? Uh, Aces, Las Vegas, Aces or something? Yeah. Yeah, Washington basketball legend though, because she played in. Yeah. She was in college. Uh, yeah, she was really good. She was like my celebrity crush for like a week one time. <laughs> so I, I did see that. Uh, that was the most <coughs> random thing I've ever seen though, because yeah. I had no idea they were together. But Darren Dives Waller off to New York. Uh, I think it was. Yeah, it was him. He was on the Pivot one time, and they were talking about his past. And he battled addiction for like, from age 15 to 25, so until he got out of college. Really? And he failed over 100 drug tests in the league. And then he went to a uh, rehab center for like a really long time. Uh, I think it was there where he met like a best friend and they were like, alright, we're going to quit this, we're going to quit this. And neither of them could quit it for a really long time. And he said, uh, within the past few years is where it's like truly changed. And he's still seeing like a therapist every week, but he's like, he related it to putting a, a puzzle back. And so he was like, that person, the therapist, is helping to put a puzzle back together to live like his life. So yeah. I'm a big Darren Waller guy. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it, there's been a ton of movement. And some more news. Uh, Stephon Gilmore, huge pickup. He goes to the Cowboys for a fifth-round draft pick and so, the next draft. Yeah. It's your year. Basically. It's the Cowboys' year. We say it every year. <laughs> but this year. It's happening. This is the one. Yeah, so 2024, y'all are winning the Super Bowl. Yeah. No doubt about it. Oh, for sure. Um, and then one more move, David Montgomery just uh, signed with the Lions. So, kept in the NFC North. But, yeah, I don't know what the Bears are going to do. Yeah. Uh, I don't even think I know. Off the top of my head, I don't think I can name another running back. So, they're going to have to figure that out. Uh, and, obviously, in the draft, Deuce Vaughn and Bijan Montgomery or Bijan Robinson are the two best running backs. So, if they can somehow pull off one of those, then they'll be fine. But, uh, yeah, so Aaron Rodgers to the Jets is obviously the talk of the offseason. Um, and there were some interesting tweets from Jets players. So uh, Garrett Wilson tweeted out, I can finally enjoy my vacay now. Y'all should see the smile on me right now. <laughs> so that hints at it. And then Sauce Gardner said, amen, say man, with the same laughing emojis. I think something's happening. And I think it's uh, just not Aaron Rodgers. Yet. Yeah, I think it's just like waiting to be... Released, yeah. but um, I did see he said uh, <clears throat> it won't be Adam Schefter or Ian Rappaport uh, like breaking the news because they don't know crap about him is what he said. So uh, mm. yeah, he said nobody in my circle talks to them, and nobody in my circle will ever talk to them. So they don't know crap. So basically, well, he's got beef with them. He said they do a good job at what they do, but uh, yeah. So one last thing I need your opinion on All right. coming from. Tennessee fan perspective. Cedric Tillman said Tennessee is the real wide receiver you. What do you think about that? This year? Yes, I think so. This draft. You think a wide receiver you, though? You think, like... this For this particular draft, yes. You could say Tennessee is wide receiver you for this year. What about overall, though? Overall? I think he's talking about overall. He's like, hey, you got to think about it. We're the real <laughs> wide receiver you. I mean, from here on out? No, I'm talking like 
right now, if somebody's like, hey, what's the best wide receiver school in the country? Would they say Tennessee? Coming from a Tennessee fan, no. I, I mean, there's been... Yeah, no, you, can, you I don't think you could say Tennessee. That's, I think it's Bama. It's pretty bold. I think it's Bama and Ohio State behind that. But yeah. both those... <clears throat> I can definitely see Tennessee in the future. With Heupel staying there. Producing two at a time like that. Kind of like what Alabama does. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, Alabama, Ohio State, they're just too consistent. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we'll a little see. Bit of, a little bit of LSU too, but... With yeah, the, with the new Tennessee offense, I don't know. We'll see. There'll be a lot of players wanting to play for the sure. Vols for sure. So, sure. Um, yeah. With that being said, let's get into some college basketball right now. And a recurring guest, Samuel Brangers. He's back. We went through March Madness last year. Had to bring him back for the pod. Yo, so how you been, man? Let's do a little wellness check. I'm good. I'm good. You know. <laughs> um, How school been? It's going good. Almost done. Down graduate at, down de- at UK. Graduate in December. Uh, been tackling some stuff, you know, been making some TikToks for the, oh. for the men's basketball squad. It's been fun, you know. So doing a little social media. Here yeah, there? yeah, yeah, yeah. I might have something, something cooking up for the summer. Hey. Okay. We'll see. I like to hear it. I like to hear it. We'll see. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay. Um, so let's just jump straight into it. We're gonna get into some uh, coaching news right away. Uh, Syracuse finally uh, gets rid of Jim Beheim. Felt like, like a little bug. It was just sitting there forever. They lost in the first round of the ACC tournament. <laughs> Jim, Jim Beheim had the stupidest postgame interview of all time. All, always has stupid postgame interviews. Yeah. So it was like, he was basically saying, uh, I'm not the guy you need to talk to when he's the only guy that has any idea of his future, which was <laughs> ridiculous. He literally can decide if he wants to retire or not. Yeah. And they're like, so are you coming back? He's like, I'm not saying that. And they're like, so... You're retiring. Well, that's up to you. And it's like, no, you're the only person that can retire, Jim. And he's like, uh, I don't make those decisions. So I literally he does. That's his yeah, decision. That's that's all he has to decide. So it was it was ridiculous. But after 47 years, second in all-time wins, fit, or five Final Four appearances, one national championship, and inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2005. So where does he rank with like of our lifetime? I'm not saying all-time because like. That's ridiculous. But I think, as much as we hate to say it, I would say Coach K. Do you think he is behind him? Or do you yeah, think it's like a, no, another? No, he for sure is behind Coach K. Coach K is the best. Even with the one championship? He's behind yeah. Coach K, yeah. Yeah, but do you think he's ahead of others? Yeah. Uh, so do you think, I think he's top ten. And coaches in our life? He's behind Roy. Izzo? Izzo. Izzo's got one. He might be. He's behind Cal. He's behind... Um, Cal's got one. Yeah, but he's behind Cal. Yeah. He's behind... Um, Self? He's behind Bill Self. He's behind Jay Wright. And then you could... He's behind Rick. Jim Calhoun. He's behind Jim Calhoun. Okay. Yeah, so I would put him... I would he's say he's top ten. He's top ten. Yeah, but... Lower end of top ten. But he, he could be top ten. It has felt like he's just been... That guy that's just always in the tournament, though. That's yeah. like as of late. And, and you don't like, ever dude. want to see his team in the tournament either, because you know he is a good coach. And yeah, he does coach well in the tournament. He was a good coach. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, became a the um, club. Yeah, the yeah. It was it was kids. it was hard to see at the end, but uh, farewell to him. Great great coaching career, and he was he was a head or he was an assistant coach for six years before that, yeah. and then at he also Syracuse. played there. At, yeah. Yeah. Only, only lived in Syracuse entire life. It's, yeah, it's ridiculous. I've never seen a human stick to one thing for as long as he did. I think he'd rather live in Syracuse rather than Hawaii. Yeah. And fun fact, his wife is uh, from Kentucky. Oh. So he's got a Kentucky, uh, Kentucky connection. So, uh, Jim Beheim to Kentucky, question mark. Yes. He's, he's filling the empty role now yeah. with KT Turner. Um, but then Patrick <laughs> Ewing parts ways with Georgetown. Uh, 13 wins in the last two seasons. Uh, he was there six seasons. I don't think he'll be missed. I think he's a legend, but he's a legend playing, yeah, not playing. a legend coaching. Yeah, I think his, I think he has to hang it up though. Some, like, in some way, he won the Big East tournament, but that was literally like the almost the last turn, almost the last game in the Big East he ever won. Yeah, that was, it was, that was two years ago. It's been really bad, uh, and they get recruits. That's what's crazy to me. They don't even like Georgetown. Do you think Georgetown will ever return to like what they once were in the eighties? Yeah, not with Patrick Ewing. No, and maybe in like five. Five years. They, I don't think they'll ever be like top ten. <clears throat> Obviously, we're they'll Big be, East fans, so it would be cool to yeah. see that. But uh, talk, they'll be like 
maybe crack into the top 25 at some point, hopefully. I'd like to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, they had Mark Adams uh, parts ways with uh, Texas Tech after wow. ra- racial comments. Can't, yeah. Can't, can't be doing that. Yeah, I can't say certain things, and he said them. So he's out of there. Um, Mike Anderson and St. John's also split up. Ricky um, Yes. And then Ole Miss hires Chris Beard, which I think is hire of the year. Shows how desperate they are, but yeah, it's a good hire. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, if you're Ole Miss, you have nothing to lose anyways. So about to say, go I for have it. to be desperate. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so obviously they got, what, the 13 seed in the SEC this year? Yeah. So. Good. Yeah, you you can't go any lower, really. Yeah. Um, but like you said, He's Rick Pitino. Coach. Oh, yeah. Rick so, uh, St. John's, Providence, or uh, St. Texas St. Tech? St. John's. St. John's. Madison Square Garden. Madison Square Garden would be rocking. It'd be awesome. Yeah. And I think, um, so the Big Ten lost the ESPN contract because they're with CBS. So, I think the Big East could get that. And Ricky P's going to be on ESPN on everybody's TV every Rick night. Rick Pitino yeah. deserves... To go back to Power Five or Power Six, yeah, Big East, and I mean the Big East is better than some Power Five. And he honestly, so. like Iona, is like in that region of the world, so he don't even have to like move. Like, yeah, still the same time zone. Yeah, yeah, he's chilling. I think he should go to St. John's though. I feel like New York screams Rick Pitino. Yeah, Madison so does the Big East. Rick Pitino. Yeah, the mecca of college basketball might as well have the mecca of coaches in there too. Exactly. Uh, so this would be his fourth team taken to the Final Four with Providence. Uh, if he took St. John's, uh, Providence, Kentucky, Louisville, and uh, then it would be St. John's. And I think he could actually do it. I, I, That's crazy. I think he's got six or seven years left in him. Rick Pitino could do literally anything he wants. Yeah. Except for hire, you know. Yeah. Recruit players in a certain way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, I feel like Rick Pitino in the Big East would be good for the soul of college oh, yeah. basketball. Um, Rick Pitino is good for college basketball. It's so, yeah. Time, it's time for him to come back. And also, uh, which is it is it isn't really big news, but Will Wade, a popular name, is McNeese State's new coach. And he actually, I saw that he got suspended for the first five games wow. that season. So that's so sad. <laughs> that's funny. Though. That, that's a good <laughs> basketball coach to just ruin his <laughs> that's life. So funny though. <laughs> yeah, uh, he was actually fa- like one of the favorites to go to uh, Western. And McNeese State's their their AD said he was like, this is like one of the top college basketball jobs that you could have. That's and then and then he suspends Will Wade for the first five games. So it's like, <laughs> what are we doing? That's ridiculous to say it's one of the top yeah, basketballs. For guys. sure. McNeese State. Very bold. Very bold. But, yeah, and I, I do say Providence because uh, all the Ed Cooley rumors to Georgetown. Georgetown. Why would he go to Georgetown, though? What's, like, the, the meaning? He's from Providence. So. Yeah, he's been at Providence his whole career, too. Yeah. I, I, think, just, he's, I think he's pretty set at Providence. So do you think, like, he'd only leave for, like, money? I don't out. think he's going to leave Providence. That's just for my anything. Opinion. Yeah, he loves Providence. He's I don't want him to leave. Yeah, I don't I like, want him to leave. I like all. him at Providence. Uh, he's a good fit there. I also, wouldn't mind Ricky P at Georgetown. I wouldn't if, either if that was an option. Just anywhere Rick Pitino could become a coach that can actually win games. Not saying Iona can't. They could. But anywhere Rick Pitino could actually make a run in March and and turn some heads would be fun. The fact that he's a 13 seeded Iona is impressive. Yeah. In itself. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we just need Ricky P back in. In the talk. Yeah, in the talk of... of mainstream of, college basketball. Yeah, exactly. Need him in, in the Power Six. Uh, but we talked about it last podcast. SEC tournament. Uh, Kentucky, we got a four seed. No, three, three seed. seed. Three seed. Three seed. No, and we played nice. Vandy first night. Uh, lost. 80-73. to 73. Uh, Samuel was in I was attendance. There. I was there. I was there. Yeah. And um, the only fun part of the game was at the very beginning... Whenever Antonio Reeves hit back to back threes, and then after that it was just no fun. Yeah, hit back to back threes, gets subbed out immediately for mm-hmm. no reason. Not Kentucky's night though, to say the least. Like we talked about it, um, when we knew the game was over was when he almost went back court, took like two steps forward, shot it over Jacob Toppin at the end of the shot clock. That's the shot clock. Yes, exactly. That that's where I knew it was officially chalked, yeah. and uh, I mean it was sad. I, I'm not a big guy like. It's um like let's win this tournament. I'd like yeah. to go far in them because yeah. I mean we've won enough to you gotta at least win a game. I think yeah you've got to at least win one. Uh, but it just wasn't our night. Lost to Vandy after losing uh senior night to him. Literally, what was it, like eight days before? Vandy owns us. Yeah, they beat us. They beat us. They're, well, they're a solid team though. They are. they are. Like and they also got robbed. They of did making the tournament. They did. They get. They got. Robbed so bad, it was yeah. crazy. But yeah, Vandy owns us. It's still Vandy though. We gotta beat them. They beat us in football senior night. 
And now they beat us in basketball, so you're not. And it's a tournament, so. Yeah. Um, and then it also hurt seeing Vandy down, what, 24, 25 at halftime? Yeah. They ended up coming back, but. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was not ugly. But for Tennessee. Our first game was versus Ole Miss. We dubbed 70 55. And the second game, we played the Tigers of Missouri, and uh, it didn't go our way. But we didn't really play bad. Yeah, we didn't take care of the ball. That, that was, like, the main reason we lost um, turnovers. Being down the guard, it, our main guy, I think it just really hurt us. And coming to the tournament, we have to find out how to play without him. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a fresh start. But uh, yeah, too many turnovers. We didn't really play bad, didn't really shoot that bad. Missouri just played better, basically. Yeah, Missouri's a really good team. Also a very good a lot, team. A lot of, like, uh – Senior guys on that team, like a lot of people that have, have had experience over the years of playing in the SEC, and obviously a good coach. We've talked about yeah. him before, Dennis I was Gates. About to say, they're coached very well. Yeah, um, yeah, they can shoot. Uh, they get up and down the floor very the fast. Physical. So they just rip the ball from you yeah. all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, both our teams went out um, the same night. So that was the you know, second game, and then yep. we went out later that night. Um, but gonna go through the Power Six Conference champions. ACC was Duke. Unfortunately, uh, they beat Virginia, uh, fifty-nine to forty-nine. Late game, Derek Lively push. Do you think that should have been a call late in the game? I'm gonna be honest. Um, we were bowling, so I wasn't really watching. But I'll go with the sh- no, no, no. I don't know. You think Queen Duke? All right. So no, I don't know. Bad call. Good. I don't, bad, bad call. Bad call. Bad, bad call. call. So the so situation. We yeah, we were bowling. <laughs> we bowling. Didn't bowling's fine. We didn't know bowling's what to a do. good time, but. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> bowling. We lost to Vandy. That is true. Bowling in Nashville, though, right? Yeah. Okay, that's still cool, kind of. Well, it was in like a rinketing place. Oh, that's not cool. Oh, uh, that's that's not cool. Though. It was really like bowling's we, not fun. Though. We had bad. It was we had fun, yeah. but it was like, what do we do? We lost to Vandy in the first day. Yeah, the vibes were just off. Bowling? Yep. <laughs> Solid. All right. Yeah. Um. Yeah. For me, in my opinion, so that was um. It felt like Virginia never had a run. They never scored the entire game. And then they finally were running. They got they got it down to like four or five at that point. Derek Lively gets fouled. Um, misses the first free throw of a one-and-one. One. Uh, they get the rebound. Derek Lively comes full out of steam. Hits him. Dude's falling out of bounds. Tries to throw it off of him. Misses him. Goes out of bounds. Duke ball. And he just shoved him. And even... Jay Billis said that should be a foul. That's how you know that's a foul in that situation when he's going against Duke. Yep. Uh, I, I'll go with a foul. It was a foul. Yeah. That, foul. I'm not saying that changes the game, but it's a four-point game, Virginia ball. Uh, and Keyhead Clark was like 0 for 11 at that point and scored like twice at that point. So uh, I think that's a different game in that situation. But uh, then you got the Big East. Marquette beat Xavier 65-51. Um, Big Ten, Purdue beat Penn State. 67-65. So that game was very close in the end. Shouldn't have been. It was a blowout all game. I yeah. was about to say, Purdue was up for like most of the game yeah. by like a pretty good margin. Until and then, the Penn State press. Yeah. yeah. And then Purdue they start, can't handle the press. They can't. <laughs> that's flag. why they're going to lose first or second round. Red probably. flag. Yeah, that's a huge red flag. Um, Imagine how different everything would be if Penn State won. I know. It'd be crazy. Something to talk about later. Um, we'll and then the Big 12, Texas beats Kansas. Seventy six to fifty six. Kansas laid an egg. Do you think that has anything to do with Bill Self not being there? <laughs> I think Kansas got smashed. Yeah. But do you think it's because uh, coaching or no? I think they still would have lost with Bill Self there. I mean Texas is good. Texas they hit him in the mouth and Kansas didn't know what to do. Yeah. They got smashed. Yeah, it, it, that's, that's it got no better way to put it. Yeah, yeah. It it got to the point where it was like illegal what Texas was doing. Yeah, I mean it was a, the the whole crowd turned into Texas fans, whether they were, they were wearing blue or not. Like, yeah, yeah everybody was screaming, "Hook them!" Um, and then the Pac-12, Arizona uh, beat UCLA sixty-one fifty-nine. What a game! Yes, yeah, that, was, that was a phenomenal basketball game. Yeah. Um, and then SEC, Alabama beat Texas A&M eighty-two to sixty-three. Also, just abusing. That was ridiculous. I think the only the only team that could have given Alabama a run for its money in the SEC was Kentucky. Only because Kentucky, that's Kentucky's tournament. What, you disagree? All right. All right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, go, no, you go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Because I feel like Kentucky is the only team that can kind of like hit you where it hurts. I don't think I think Alabama would have won 
Yeah. I don't think it would have been a 19 point win. I didn't want to play Alabama. I do know no. that. No. Yeah, if, it, if it's you up to me, I don't want match, to. Like, I, know, I know what you're saying. You, Kentucky, Kentucky can, can match be, Alabama's yeah, like, it, it, like, it would be physicality, like, I guess you could say. Like, and Cal would have them ready. Like, SEC championship game, Cal, that's that's a recipe for success for Kentucky. Yeah. And it would have, I mean, the crowd would have been dominant. Yeah, Kentucky. the crowd is a, an extra player on the court. Yeah, especially yeah. on neutral site games. It would have been like a home game for Kentucky. So, like, I mean... It, Alabama probably would have beat Kentucky in the championship. I would have been fine with it because I, uh, I don't like to win conference tournaments. Yeah, they're not fun anymore. When, um, you, when you win four straight. Yeah, <laughs> but no, Texas A&M, they never had a chance. Yeah. Um, I think it, also I part of it was that Texas A&M beat them late in the season. Uh, yeah. And so Alabama was just getting a little payback. Um, the crowd was predominantly Alabama. And, yeah, you know, because they were there for the first time ever. Yeah. Um, but also in the AAC, uh, Houston was the number one team in the AP poll going into the conference tournament, and they lost to Memphis. Uh, and that was Memphis's first time winning a conference championship in 10 years. So, shout out to Penny. It's weird. He can coach bad players, can't <laughs> coach great players. I mean, he's got them. They're playing good. They should have beat him in the, to end the season. Yeah, because Jamal Shedd hit a, a buzzer winner. beater. Yeah. Um, Memphis, scary team. Memphis is a scary team. Like, eight seed is they, crazy. They give some Kentucky 2014 vibes to me. Yeah. They turned it around towards the late of the season. And they lost in the championship game of the conference tournament. So Yeah. Or no, they won. But Yeah, they, they did win. Uh, and the difference is um, they have Kendrick Davis, which can give any team 50 any given night. Yeah. It doesn't matter how good uh, your team is. But um, And now, it's official. North Carolina is now the first team ever to be ranked preseason number one and not make the tournament. Uh, which, whenever I saw the stats, I was like, yeah. was... Was it Kentucky 2013? Weren't they preseason number one? They didn't make the tournament. I didn't think we were preseason number one. I don't know. Because we had transfers and... Yeah, that's so. true. They were number... Kentucky was number one that season. Yeah. Didn't make it, but not preseason, though. Yeah. Uh, and now they've said that they're not going to play in the NIT. You think it's poor form? You think it's... Uh, not really, honestly. I kind of... If Kentucky didn't make the tournament, I was like, I'm done. You yeah. Know? I mean, it's kind of like scummy to the NIT, but it's kind of like... Yeah. Same with the play. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. But it's basically like you're playing because you weren't good enough to make it to the. Yeah. But it's also like, as a fan, I was kind of. Like, whenever I thought about Kentucky not making the tournament, whenever we lost to Georgia, I was like, do I really want to watch this team play in the NIT? And my answer was no. Because the only time I ever watched Kentucky play in the NIT, we got smacked in the first game to Robert Morris. Yeah. I think that's why they didn't, because they've seen what happened in Kentucky that one time. Mm. Like nobody five, has motivation. In and it. five years down the road, it's gonna be like if you do what Kentucky did and lose to Robert Morris on a buzzer beer, it's like oh you lost Robert Morris in the first round of the NIT. In North Carolina, it's like oh they like they didn't play. From, yeah, it's like, but I mean I also do understand why people are mad because it's kind of like North Carolina thinks they're better than everybody else. Which, yeah, you actually hate North Carolina too. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm wearing North Carolina blue, but you know, <laughs> yeah, I'll get color in honor of their season. But it's also like they kind of are better than everybody else. So they're, I feel like they should be allowed to do that because, like, I don't know. I didn't understand the whole hype of being, being preseason number one, though. Oh, me neither. That was terrible. That was horrible. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I also don't understand how they're not good after going to the championship and bringing literally everybody back, uh, except Manic. Yeah, that's the reason they're not good. But they brought in Pete Nance. I mean, he's not bad. Yeah, but Manic was so good for them last year. Yeah. In the tournament, so, I mean... I just I don't, I, don't, I don't see how you're that bad though. Yeah, I don't either. I don't see how you're not making the tournament. I think bad. they also had some like locker room issues. I did hear about that, yeah. but and you can't. I feel like everybody uses that excuse. Yeah, if you just, just suck. suck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like oh, there's stuff going on in the locker. Yeah, room. I feel like it, it might. Theirs was pretty legit yeah. though. I heard there was something over a woman too. Oh yeah, I think Caleb Love. A woman. Yeah. Slept with another guy's girl. That might cost something. That'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that might. A good one. I don't. I don't want to make any false Not accusations, but. I think yeah. that's happened, but um, they've had like two or three players transfer out already too. Yeah. So uh, it's not good over in uh yeah. Um, also, not good for the Dirty Birds as they've had like three starters. Yeah, but they're, transfer. I mean, they're so far down in oblivion. It's kind of <laughs> like, are they ever going to come back? Yeah. Wait. So you think? Uh, I saw this the other day. What program do you think is more likely to be brought back to like not dominance but top of the notch, like college basketball, mm-hmm. Georgetown or Louisville? Uh, probably Louisville. I think it's be, it'd be easier to recruit and yeah, George. I mean, Georgetown didn't have everything even going wrong with them, besides the fact they just hired the wrong guy. 
<clears throat> yeah. Louisville, they might have hired the wrong guy, but. I feel like Louisville, you can also get any coach, I feel like. Yeah. You can get a Louisville's lot more coaches. A hotter job than Georgetown. Yeah, unfortunately. But yeah. Uh, I would like Louisville to be good again, though. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun for the rivalry. It it's fun whenever Louisville And good. it's sad because, like, their fans, like, they don't care right now. Yeah, it's. Like, just, you just bash them and then it's they're like, like we're yeah. up on a dude that's just already in a corner, like, huddled up. Yeah, it's like punching down on somebody. Like, they're yeah. just already low and we're just. Yeah. You can't. It's not fun. Yeah. It sucks. Don't yeah. Don't get better. Yep, they've got to get better. Uh, hopefully <laughs> next year. But let's get straight into the bracket. Probably not. So um, we're going to go with uh, by region. So we'll start. Do you have all selections again? Uh, I don't know about all because okay. I feel like we'll mostly have like the one seed. It's the same. Uh, in the south, we've got the the one seed is Alabama, but I'm assuming we're all taking Alabama over. Uh, what is it? A and M Corpus Christi A- just won. A and M. A and M. Um, but I'm thinking, yeah, obviously. Um, all right, so the eight nine Maryland and West Virginia. Who do you all like in that one? I like West Virginia because mm. Maryland has only won two road games. One of them was Louisville. I don't know. So that doesn't count. That, yeah, that, that's that not game a road does, game. Yeah, that doesn't even count. But like, it's away from like neutral site road, like on the road. Yeah. It's not in Maryland. Yeah, but they just suck, so it doesn't count. <laughs> Like yeah, Louisville so sucks. Saying. Right, right, right. But <laughs> yeah, so yeah. they won one. Right. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, also West Virginia, they're weird because they're 17th in Kempom. It's kind of like why? Why are they an eight seed or nine seed in 17 Kempom? Because they have 19. Lo- they have 14 losses and 19 wins. That's why. But it's kind of keep an eye on. Keep an eye on. And Bob Huggins has like he's in the top 10 of like most tournament yeah. wins. So they could give Alabama run for their money. Yeah. Um, and I think it's also uh, a good note that they played in like the best conference in the regular they season. Did. So, so they were getting punched in the mouth every night. Yeah. And they're in the tournament. And um, next, a popular 12-5 uh, upset, Charleston versus San Diego State. Um, I actually have that upset. I'm taking Me too. Charleston. Me too. I like Charleston. They can score like crazy. Who do you have in that one? They figure I out. had San Diego State. Um, you did have San Diego State. I did. Okay. Okay. So, fun fact for you, uh, what is it, since since 2016, the Mountain West is 1-11. Um, and Odds are against us. And last year, uh, they didn't make it past the first 10 hours of the day. They so, make, they you still have time to make the change, though. Hey, no, 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 yeah, hey. Charleston figured out how how to way to how how to win games. And I like that. Yeah, because I mean, at one point they were top twenty five in the country. I don't think they were ever a top twenty five team in the country, but I mean, they're good. They're a good basketball team. Yeah. Um, next, we've got four seed Virginia uh, versus Furman. That's also a popular pick for an upset mm-hmm. uh, because Virginia just lost their best offensive player, best shooter on the team, uh, to a hand injury. So the scoring that was barely there is gone, and uh, so it's basically up to Kihei Clark. And uh, athletic guards. So, who do you like in that one? I feel like this is a coin flip. Go you ahead. Go? No, you go. You're, you're guessing. I feel like this is a coin flip. Um, I can see it going either way. Cause Furman, That's how I see it, too. Furman doesn't really score that much. They're a defensive-minded team. Virginia also doesn't score that much defensive-minded team. This is going to be a boring... Yeah, I can't see like, myself watching this. It's going to be like 50 to like 50, and it's going to come down to the wire, and somebody's going to have to throw up something. And, it's, and that's going to be Furman. Furman? Yeah, Final answer. Furman. All right, all right then. We got a Furman pick. Yep. I, I got Furman too. I actually have Virginia. Okay. So uh, I'll be the, the oddball here. Um, another big game, which I can see being electric, Creighton versus NC State. Who do you all like in that one? I like Creighton a lot. Ooh. You like NC State? No I, I'm picking NC State uh, just because. Or the Fighting McDermott's. Yes. <laughs> why, why NC State though? Um, just because I feel like Creighton, I don't know. You think they're overrated? Yeah, a little bit. I think the difference is, though, I feel like, just from watching NC State, I feel like it's a one-man show to Quavion Smith. I mean, he's good, Mm -hmm. but I feel like for uh, Creighton, they're led by a senior guard, Nimbard, and then Baylor Shireman can get buckets any way possible, and down low, they've got a good five. So, their front court is elite. I like Creighton. They got, they had... Big time hype at the beginning of the season. There were a lot of people's picks for the final four at the beginning of the season, and then they lost like six straight. Yes, and adversity is good though. But yeah, and they've been climbing back 
throughout the season, and I feel like they're back. They also gave Providence their only home loss of the season. Yeah. So they got they got bounced in the Big East, but it's I mean that's fine. It's the Big East. It's tough. Yeah. You nice can't expect going. a ton. Uh, nerves get nerves get high. But yeah, I do like Creighton in that one. Um, Baylor versus uh, UC Santa Barbara. Baylor. 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 Yeah, they're I've actually good. seen they're a couple good. people picks UC. Yeah, Baylor. Baylor. They're not great, but no, uh, they're not that bad. UCSB. Yeah. I don't think is going to win. Um, and then a game that'll be like a hundred to a hundred, uh, Missouri and Utah State. I like Missouri just for the SEC bias. Yeah, I like Missouri, Missouri for sure. Uh, Utah State's coach though, UMBC's old coach. Oh, I didn't, I didn't he know knows that. a little something about upsets. Uh, yeah, he does. You know something big time about upsets. Yeah, big time upsets. If he wins, I'm never going against him ever. Right. If he right. wins this game, um, and then to finish off that South is Arizona versus Princeton. I've actually seen a Princeton pick in this. Not 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 me necessarily. Not I'm going. For me. I'm going Arizona. Yeah, Arizona. Arizona. It's hard to. I feel like it's hard for me to ever pick Ivy League schools. Like Demarcus Cousin said, this ain't no spelling bee. This is basketball. Basketball. So I'm not yeah. picking any smart kids. Uh, <laughs> then we'll go down to the East. Purdue is the one seed. Is that – so do y'all think Purdue is legit? Purdue's the weakest one seed. I don't think they're legit. So, all right, I'm, I'm going to pull up these these really? numbers because yeah, I don't think they're legit. I've heard a lot of that. I've heard a lot of, like, Purdue is, like, the, the weakest. They don't, uh, they don't have, like, somebody that can just score besides Zach Eady. They don't have good guards either. True. If True. they get pressed, they're going to lose. So this is some of their out-of-conference wins. They beat West Virginia 80-68, to Marquette 75-70, to Duke seventy five fifty six and Gonzaga eighty four to sixty six. They played really well whenever at the beginning of the seasons because they figured out how they wanted to play a lot earlier than a lot of other teams did. I feel like this yeah. season it took teams such a long time and still taking teams some teams haven't figured out yet how they want to play. And Purdue figured it out early and that's why they were like They were very good they early. They were beating everybody early. Yeah. But I feel like everybody's starting to catch up to them and they're falling back, I think, to where People thought they were at the beginning of the season, which was like, you know, good, but like, not number one seed good. Yeah, I, I think Purdue is actually weak. Like, just after watching them the past, I watched them the last three games of the uh, Big Ten, and it felt like if Zach Eady's not able to like catch the ball over whatever the other team's big man is, there's no way they score. Yeah, and if they're not hitting shots, no, then they're done. They're not beating anybody. So that could honestly be the second sixteen. Uh, over one ever. I don't think it's gonna be that because they, they do they do have a seven six guy and yeah Texas Southern and Fairly Dickinson doesn't, but Memphis yeah. Memphis or FAU could give them a run for their money. But I think if the, if if there's like a certain coach that can figure out how to play Zach Eady without having that big, then I mean you can out athletic H guard that they have. Yeah. So and press them like crazy. And yeah. You, you got a shot. Yeah, that's another thing. Like we mentioned that the Big Ten. If one team just presses on the whole game, it might be wraps, and they'll just yeah. get like a thirty-point lead and it's yeah. over. Because they don't have like Carson Edwards or somebody like Carson Edwards. Yeah. Um, then you've got Memphis, which we talked about as a sleeper team, versus FAU, which is also a very good basketball team. Yeah. So who do y'all like enough? This would be a fun game. I yeah. have Memphis. I also have Memphis. Yeah, I'm taking Memphis in that one. I can see Memphis going to the Final Four. Memphis to the Final Four would be crazy. Uh, I think they're hot right now. They should have beat Houston. The big and the in the season, they beat them in the conference championship. <clears throat> Houston is a number one seed, so like, the yeah, math, you know, lots yeah. Of, I mean, like the common sense is there, and they and then they handled their they handled business in the the AAC all season. Yeah, they just lost to Houston, you know. So with that that stat of the like seven seed being seven seed or higher being in the final four, the last. What, I think Memphis 11 has, a, years? has a real shot. You think that's the one? I think Memphis, if, if there is one, Memphis, Memphis is, is, it. is my favorite. All right, then we've got Duke and Oral Roberts, which, for those of y'all that don't know, we're both Kentucky fans, and I absolutely despise Duke. So right. it makes me so happy that Oral Roberts is their first-round matchup. But I'm unfortunately taking Duke because they're way too hot right now. Yeah, Duke is one of the hottest teams in the country. And if it does come down to like a Memphis-Duke game in the Sweet 16, that will be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I would also love to see if it was at all possible Oral Roberts versus Purdue because you could see like the two tallest dudes to ever play college That's basketball true. go against that each would other. Be, that would be a lot of fun. That, that, that would be. That it would be. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, that would be outstanding uh, with Connor Vanover versus Zach Eady. But um, 
So who who do you like in that one? I, I, I have Duke. Yeah, Duke they're just winner. way too hot right now, especially to go out first round. Um, or yeah. it's a great team, uh, but Duke's just hot. Yeah, and like you said, um, with uh, like Duke kind of not finding their identity until late. I did hear Jay Bill was talking about it, and he like broke it down a different way. He was like, the main change that they made was making Jeremy Roach not a point guard, making him a scoring guard, and making Tyrese Proctor not the scoring guard, but the point guard. Oh, yeah. So they're making it to where Jeremy Roach just gets buckets now. Yeah. And he had like 20-something. He good. He's a scorer, for sure. Yeah. He's got a deadly mid-range, and he, he can finish anything. Yeah. So uh, you can definitely see where the change was, and it completely flipped their season. Yeah. Um, so then we've got six-seed Kentucky versus Providence. So skipped, uh, the t- Bryce Hopkins. Yeah, didn't skip the Tennessee game. Oh, the- how it is. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, all right. We go back. To Tennessee, Louisiana. Yeah. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. I, I got like Tennessee. That, I like that game. <laughs> I got. I got Tennessee. Dang, doing me dirty over here. No, nah, I don't. We we know nah, who. I'm just kidding. I got oh. Tennessee though. Tennessee. Okay. I'll, I'll let you cook. You let me cook. I'll let you cook. Okay. So, from February up until now, Tennessee is five and seven. Um, so I haven't finished the season great, so that kind of scares me. Uh, I said before, uh, lost the point guard. Um, so that was a big part of our offense and defense. Uh, and then Louisiana has, like, one guy. Uh, his last name's, like, Brown. Uh, Is it the big man? He is. It's, like, Jacob or, uh, I don't know, some Brown. He averages, like, 20 and 10. So one thing Tennessee is good at is creating chaos um, for offensive or for offenses. And then, so if we disrupt him, I think we have a pretty good chance of beating Louisiana. Yeah, I also have Euros Posage, so he can just get in that dude's head immediately. Right. Before and the tip even He'll happens. try it, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And since they only have one guy, even if he does, like, say he gets his 20 and 10 or whatever he averages, and then one guy can't win the whole game for you, really. Not yeah. with the way Tennessee plays defense, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because um, they'd have to have somebody else step up, and I don't think we'd let them do that. So I think we have a pretty good chance of yeah. yeah. Jordan I, Brown. I, Jordan Brown. Jordan I knew Brown. it was something Brown. Jay Brown. I said Jay. <laughs> yeah, I do like Tennessee in that one, though, because, I mean, I don't know a ton about Louisiana, but I did yeah. like watch a little bit of their style, and it is a kind of one-man type of show. Mm-hmm. And I always, like, I always trust an old guy in March, and Rick is older. Yeah. So, uh, and like you said, defense. I feel like defense will get you through certain games, what? especially when it's a one-man team. Our tournament history. Oh, it's, it's uh, bad. It's, it's not good. Yeah, but the tournament history is not losing the first round necessarily, True. though. True. So I think y'all might. Unless, you, unless you're playing Wright State. Wright State? Yeah. Is that who they lost to? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, I just know, like, the Loyola was, what, second round? Third round? Yeah, Loyola, second Chicago. Round. That second. was second. And then Michigan was second. Mm-hmm. So maybe, wow. it's just well, a, maybe it's just the second round. So if we, we'd be Louisiana, probably go on and play Duke. Um, that's. That's. Pretty scary. No, we're in a tough spot. No, if you, if you, yeah, you're done. If you beat. Oh, thanks for the, thanks for the confidence. Well, there's no, I don't have any confidence, Tennessee. (laughs) To be honest with you, they don't have their point guard. Yeah, yeah, no, that's the Ziegler thing. It's literally Tennessee has to like. And like you said, they're five and seven. I want to say start over, but they have to find a new way how to play. Yeah. Basically, because most of our game plan was, you know, through him. Yeah. Uh, He's definitely a leader. And Fiscobi can't really like. Because he's kind of like a catch and shoot off like the screen. Right. He can't do that if he has to run the point. Yeah, right. yeah. He he's been playing our most minutes, and he's just. I mean, he's, he's be been playing like tired. crazy. Yeah, he's tired. Like yeah. it's just hard. It's yeah. a tough spot for Tennessee to be in. The edge for me it in sucks. this is that you all have Josiah Jordan James, and as much as I like don't like Tennessee, Josiah Jordan James is such a good basketball player. And I mean, I just think he's he's good enough to beat. We'll see. Rick Barnes, he's you know good coach, so he'll change the game plan, figure out how to play without Zakai. So we'll see. Yeah. So now, Kentucky versus Providence. Uh, we got the B Hop matchup. So uh, for those of y'all that don't know, Bryce Hopkins at Kentucky yeah. last year transferred to Providence, and uh, what is it? Noah Locke has never beat us. So he played it four to three years. Louisville one year. Yeah. Now he's a fifth year there. And then they also have Devin Carter's never breed us. He was at South Carolina. Um, but, yeah. We've also never lost to Providence. I only remember playing them in 2015. 3-0. When, when, did it, when else did we play them? 2013-14. Uh, and then the other one was like 1985. Oh, yeah. That, not real. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, I do remember the 2015 one. And they actually gave us fits in 2015. For no yeah. reason, with the loaded 14-15 season. But uh, with the loaded roster, they gave us fits. So 
like I said, Big East sucks to play against. Uh, but some of the key stats was we nearly have the same three point percentage. Um, they don't, or they they they're 16th in offensive rebounding in the country, so that's something to look out for. Um, but they're susceptible to getting blocked a lot. Um, they're not big. They're not yeah. very big. Neither Providence or UK Bryce force their, turnovers. Bryce, Bryce averages the most rebounds. Yeah. And if it's Oscar versus Bryce. He started at five in multiple games, too. Yeah. If it's Oscar versus Bryce, I'm sorry, but. Oscar's getting 30. Yeah. 30 boards. 30, yeah. Easy. Yeah, no doubt about that. I'm, I'm excited. I just, if we, uh, we can't lose. <laughs> Yeah, last year when I came on here, like I was so confident that we would beat St. Peter's. <laughs> we didn't even spend time on St. Peter's. No, we were like, ah, oh, it's easy, that's easy. <laughs> so we should honestly spend 15 minutes talking about this matchup because <laughs> yeah. we had to do the opposite of last year. Last yeah, we've got to do year, everything there was different. There so much confidence. Oh, yeah. I was like, St. Peter's would be up 15. Honestly, we might lose to Providence. Just saying it. Not really, but I'm just saying it. You said not really, though. I know, so, not really. So really. So really, no, not really. But really though. But really though. So Kentucky is 14th in Kim Palm <laughs> offense. Providence is 16th in Kim Palm offense. Uh, Kentucky is one and six against uh, top 25 offenses, and Providence is two and six against top 25 offenses. Honestly, what it comes down to, and what it's come down to all season long, is if Kentucky can hit shots. Because if Kentucky yeah. can hit shots, we'll win. But if Kentucky can't hit shots, like like Vanderbilt both times, then it's I'm sorry, but we're going to be sent home early. Yep. And it's gonna be terrible because I'm gonna graduate from college and I'm never gonna see a single tournament win from Kentucky. Yep, and that's gonna be so wow. impressive. Yeah, that that, and that, that would be the first class ever. I if, know if that happens. Wow, the first yeah. class ever to see no it's tournaments. Sad. So there's a lot of pressure on. The oh, guys. so yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, so much. And there's a lot of pressure on Cal. This is the game of my life. It's like, yeah, this is like the game yeah. of like destiny. This is a huge gonna, matchup. We're gonna play Friday. Yep, Friday, Friday night, it's 7, 7 10. 10. CBS, Iron Eagles on the call. I'm so excited. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, it's excited. But uh, maybe, like, I don't know if you remember, like, well, you were actually at the game. During the Florida game, it was Tom Hart talking about Oscar last year. We almost didn't get on the plane because uh, yeah. he got a feeling from oh, God. Oh, man, I hope that feeling from God's good. Yeah, he said he got a feeling from God that – uh, uh, something yeah. tragic was going to happen, and he almost didn't go to Indianapolis. Yeah. And then they finally got him to go. And uh, I don't know if he told Cal or something, but Ian Eagle said before the game that Cal was as nervous as he'd ever seen him before a basketball game. Yeah. He wow. was set up from failure yeah. from the start. Um, yeah. But hope, uh, hopefully God's feeling is good this time. I hope so. Because um, I, I need it. If there's ever a bonus from losing early in the SEC tournament, getting Case and healthy will be huge. Yeah, and severe. Yeah, severe. If he's back, which I'm not a big fan of just throwing somebody into a tournament, but it's always good to have depth. If he can play like 10 minutes, give some, give Case and some like some rest and some leeway to like make some be susceptible susceptible to some mistakes and not cost us so much. Because severe, he comes in and he's so fat, like he's so fast, and I mean he. We give him crap, but like he's he's a good point guard, and he's such an annoying defender. Like he would yeah. drive their best <laughs> yeah. guard. He would have him he's, in jail. He's very crucial for Kentucky, I think. Yeah, if, just to come in and play like ten minutes a game. That's why I hate that a lot of BBN bashes him. Yeah, they hate him. He didn't even come. He did like he like he didn't come to the senior day stuff. It was sad. I don't know. See what's severe, what's happening to Severe is kind of sad. Yeah, it's very sad. But hopefully he. I actually hope he transfers and balls out. Yeah, for like for his sake. Because Kentucky fans sometimes suck. Yeah, best and worst fan base in my opinion. But yeah, that's that's all that's all we got on Kentucky. Hopefully. Yeah. So then we've got three seed Kansas State versus Montana State. Uh, I like Kansas State. Yeah. Yeah. Who are you liking this one? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go Kansas State for sure. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it. they're kind of like another one man type deal with Keontae Johnson. Keontae Johnson. Johnson's good. Good guard play, but. I mean, I don't know anything about Montana State, so no, I'm just yeah. gonna assume. Yeah, that's exactly uh, why I picked Kansas State. Well, honestly, yeah. that's gonna be like one that's gonna be like, oh, Montana State's winning. And there's yeah, twenty seconds. Like, left. wow, Montana's up twenty-five in the first half. <laughs> yeah. So that's gonna be one of those games. <laughs> and then we've got uh, Michigan State um, versus USC. Yeah, you don't like Michigan State. What, what's no, not really. You just don't I like don't North know, Dude, I just don't like Michigan or Michigan State for oh, some what's, what's And you don't like Penn State, really, right? You don't, right? Like, a, you don't, like, you don't like the Mid? Don't like Ohio State. Yeah, you, don't, you, don't like, uh, <laughs> you don't like the Mid? Huh? Oh, the, the state of Michigan. Michigan? No. 
I like the Great Lakes. It's kind of like the Big Ten type thing. Like you just, you're not a fan? Yeah, right? I guess That's it's the Big Ten conference. The Mid Ten. Yeah. Yeah. They don't win. Yeah, yeah. the Mid Ten don't win. That's that's true. Except for Izzo. I think it's just the Izzo. I just don't like. I don't think it's like. They also think they're the best uh, football conference too. So that's, that's, that's it, yeah. They okay, that, the, there it is. There's the reason they I think they're the can't best football. Stand. I think they're the best basketball. Yep. But the, I mean, they're like fifth. Damn, and then the, whole and the, the media, the up. media hypes them up so much. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Somebody else realizes it. I'm right there with you. Yeah. Yeah. Right there with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But with that being said, I still took Michigan State. Yeah. I'm not yeah. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Fun stat. Fun stat. Uh, the Big Ten. Whenever they're seven seed in the seven ten matchup, they are seven and zero. Yeah, so that that's a huge stat to take yeah, take note of. Yeah. Uh, but if you're going off Snoop Dogg, USC is going to the yeah, Elite Eight. Yeah. So that's got to be a homer Dale thing, though. Uh, USC is not bad, though. I will say. No, they're, they're not a bad team, but they're not. But Michigan State. Is it's Tom Izzo. Michigan State's Michigan State, and they also have Tom Izzo. So it's yeah, they've like... got it. They've got to do it on the sideline that wins basketball games. Yeah. Yeah. So then we've got the Big East champion Marquette uh, versus Vermont. And Vermont has a Bellarmine transfer, so I would wish they were playing somebody else other than Marquette because I'm taking Marquette in that one. Yeah, Marquette's going to win. Right there with you. Yep. And they had the Big East Player of the Year. This is the same spot guard. that Kentucky was in last year, though, so if it happens, really? it happens. Yeah, we'd never want that spot again. No, no, no. If that's how it goes. Nope. All right, so moving to the Midwest, Houston versus the Norse of Northern <coughs> Kentucky. So... Uh, as much as I would like to click uh, Northern Kentucky, yeah, That'd they're Houston. Awesome. They're getting smoked. Yeah, probably. Do you, wait, is Marcus Sasser going to be back? Uh, that's a good question. Because that was a big issue in the tournament. He's questionable. They um, still have the best defensive guard in the country. Which, it would, be, it would suck for him, though, because he was out for last tournament, too. Yeah. Like, what, what was it? AC, ACL last? Or no, uh, ankle something? It was like high ankle sprain or something. I don't know. He wasn't in. Yeah. And, and it was rough for them. He was preseason All-American and became an All-American. Yeah. So... I really want to see him play. Yeah, he's good. But, uh, they also do have Jamal Shedd, best defensive guard in the country. Yeah. Don't care what numbers say, he's my favorite. And they have a top five pick, Jairus Walker. So yeah. They're good. Yeah, Houston's a good basketball team. And big Kelvin Sampson guy. But there's never been an NCAA tournament winner, a championship winner, with a team, with a conference, with less than four teams in it. And the AAC only has got two. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. 16-1 upset. No, I'm not going to say they're going to lose first round. They're never, yeah. I just don't think they're going to win at all. Yeah, I've seen some people that actually do have that, but I'm definitely not taking them too far now. So. Well, no, they can go They can go, they can go. They can go to the natty, but they're not winning. They, they won't win. Yeah. But also, I mean, there's also the stat of there's never been an NCAA championship winner that never that's that didn't make it to the, their conference semifinal and Kentucky got beaten in their quarterfinal. Yeah, so we're going to break that streak this year. Yeah, yeah. So the stats that go away, the the point away from us, we like to flip. Yeah, those don't work. But the stats that, that go towards the other teams, we we st- we stand strong. Yeah, that's what we make the picks for. Yeah. So then we've got Iowa versus Auburn. I'm taking Auburn by a million in this one. This is gonna be a bad basketball game. Both yeah. of these teams stink. Fred McCaffrey's <laughs> gonna stare into Bruce Pearl's soul. It's a, they honestly should just give him a put him in a boxing ring with Bruce Pearl in one corner and Fred McCaffrey in the other corner and just let him box. Fred McCaffrey would be die. More, I think that'd be more entertaining than this basketball game. Yeah, be. I feel bad for the rim in this game too. Yeah, that rim's gonna be hurting. After I this. think both of these teams stink, and they're gonna get smoked by Houston in the next round too, no matter who. But I got I got Auburn. I got Auburn as well. Yeah, I'm taking Auburn. Uh, Miami versus Drake, also another kind of popular upset pick, but I'm going with the Canes, even though they don't have uh, Norshad Almir, which I think is their best player. Isaiah Wong won ACC Player of the Year, but I think Almir is the key to that team. I like Miami, but I'm I'll, taking Miami. A lot of people love Drake, but I like Miami. 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 All right, Indiana versus Kent State. I watched three Kent State games this year. They won all three. I'm going to watch this game. They're going 4-0 this year. 4-0 this year. Indiana's losing first round. Okay, Trace Jackson Davis, see you later. Yep. Deuces to Indiana. That, I have actually Indiana moving on. Really? Right, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. Um, Big Ten hater, we got Indiana <laughs> moving on. <laughs> <laughs> then we've got Iowa State versus the winner of the game that is currently being played between Mississippi State and Pitt. It doesn't matter who wins that game. I'm taking that team over. 35-34, Pitt's up at half. Mississippi State's going to win. Uh, yeah. I'm going with it. But I got the winner of that beating Iowa State. Yeah, I've got that winner going on. I watched them in the Big 12 tournament. They they turned it on towards the end of the Baylor game, I think. But, yeah, I just I feel like there's always a game, like always a 
a team that plays in the first four that moves on to the round of 32. Mm-hmm. So I like this is the two teams I like because I like these two teams better than Arizona State and Nevada. Yeah, and sure. uh, Jeff Capel won uh, ACC Coach of the Year, and they've been very good, except yeah. for getting beat by 200 by yeah. Duke. ACC, though. But, yeah, they're still, you know, they're still fun. Yeah. So, wait, what do you have in that one, Kev? The Iowa State versus the 11 Mississippi State. Or Mississippi Pitt. State. I have Mississippi State moving on. All right. Um, Xavier versus Kennesaw State. Uh, I actually have Xavier, even though Fremantle is out. I got Kennesaw State. Kennesaw State. Okay. Best pick I've heard all night. Right, Kennesaw, so Kennesaw State, State. is the Cinderella team this year. Even better right. than Houston and Northern Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know about all that, but they are moving on to the next round. Um, then Texas A&M uh, against Penn State, both of their conferences runner-ups. But I'm actually going a and I like Penn State. We got Ooh, this one. I'm going a and I'm going a and mainly because I want the Texas and Texas A&M match. That'd be fun. But I know a guy that graduated from Penn State, and he's never had any fun watching basketball, and he's actually having fun right now. So I like Jalen Pickett, but I mean, yeah. Well, no, I I know a guy that went to Penn State. He's having fun watching basketball right now, so I want him to have a little bit more fun. Yeah, but I also just want to see. I want to see Buzz Williams. <laughs> the words you just said. <laughs> Say how, all, how kind. How kind. <laughs> I, I do want to see uh, Buzz Williams in his uh, suit, though. Moving on. Yeah, I mean it'd be fun. either of these. I, I like both these teams. Both these teams are fun to watch. I'd be fine with either of these teams, but I got Penn State just just yeah. just for the vibes of this other guy. Um, and then Texas versus two paced Colgate. <laughs> um, I took Colgate against Wisconsin. They screwed me. Never picking Colgate again. I'm moving. I got Texas going on. I do remember you picking them. Yeah. I, I also had Colgate beating. Wisconsin. Yeah, I was heated. <laughs> did you have Wisconsin in that one? Yeah. Oh my I did. gosh. You ever, keep going then. Colgate's Texas. never the clue. Colgate's we can find it. never won a um, tournament game, so they're never gonna ever win a tournament game. Yeah, for the history of life. And I feel like a lot of people, like if if people were at pick a two fifteen upset, this is the pick they would have. So that means it's not happening. So that means it's not happening, and we'll get to the, we'll get to the one I like later on. Yeah, a that's tease. a bold one. But yeah, so I have, I have Texas moving on, Texas. beating the toothpaste. Being a toothpaste. So, yeah. all right, we're going out west. Kansas is the one seed playing Howard in their first tournament since 1992. <laughs> but the Bison are gone. First round. Kansas is moving on. So, y'all. Oh, yeah, for y'all sure. Y'all going Howard? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, then we've got Arkansas and Illinois. Arkansas is the eight seed, I think, is a sleeper. Because if they play their Arkansas best ball. Show. Yeah, they they can be good. They can. They can also be really bad, but they can be good. Yeah. I predict, predicted them to go far last year, and they kind of did. Yeah, they did go. They went to Musselman. He's he's a. They lost in the Elite Eight. eight. Yeah, Nevada and yeah Arkansas. Uh, They got to the Final Four, but he likes the Elite Eight. Yeah, big Elite Eight guy. I think I had him in the Final Four last year, if I remember. They were good. That's crazy because they had to beat Gonzaga and they would have to beat Duke in Mm -hmm. that case. Yeah. Or Texas Tech, whatever. Uh, But then next five seed St. Mary's versus twelve VCU. I'm actually going VCU. Me too. I like uh, it's gonna be fifty to fifty also, but I think it'll be a fun fifty to fifty game, unlike the um, Virginia Furman game. Yeah, and for me, like with St. Mary's in the West Coast Conference, they're always playing like eleven o'clock, so I can watch them. Yeah, I'm not impressed. Like they're, they're, you can tell it's a team that plays well together, but they just play well. They don't play great. It's nothing like they're very fundamental. Yeah, very fundamental. It's a Bellerman type team. They yeah. just pass the ball around, perfect passes, thumbs down after every pass, and mm-hmm. layups. St. Mary's and VCU are very similar teams. Yeah. I just think VCU has a chance to go on more like more of a run. Yeah. Because I feel like St. Mary's is more half court. And they have I think I feel like they have more athletic guys too. Yeah, VCU. So who who you like in that one? Yeah, VCU. So you've got the upset. Um then Yukon versus Rick Patino's Iona. I'm actually going Yukon still. Oh yeah, for sure. Yukon's good. Yeah, Yukon's a good yeah. basketball team. Uh as much as I hate that it's Ricky P that they're going against, I think Yukon's handling business. Then you got TCU versus the winner of Arizona State and Nevada. I'm going TCU, though. Yep, TCU. TCU. And hopefully they get Eddie Lampkin back because he was part of their run last year. They're not good. They're not good without him. Yeah. Uh, they're just okay. Yeah, but, I mean, they'll, they'll win a tournament game. They're not, not going for They them. won't win two tournament games. Yeah. Oh, TCU? Yeah. Mm. Unless, they, unless they get him back. That's crazy. You have, to, you you have them TCU beating Gonzaga. Beat Gonzaga. Yep, upset. Oh, All right, so that is the next game, Gonzaga versus Grand Canyon, so you've got Gonzaga. Yep. 
But then you have Gonzaga beating Tennessee, TCU? Or no, no, you have TCU beating Gonzaga. I have TCU oh, okay, beating Gonzaga. Okay, okay. I have Gonzaga in that one, and also Gonzaga moving on to that yeah, yeah, past that sure, one. But Because Gonzaga's made it to seven straight I Sweet like, 16s. I also feel like this is Gonzaga's best chance at winning the national Those championship. Those stats are actually crazy. Yeah, they went to seven hey, straight. Streaks are meant to be broken. That's right. Said it before. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> all streaks are for. And Gonzaga's being slept on for the first time in Gonzaga's Ever. history. Yeah. And I slept on TCU in football. I can't let them do it to me again. Okay, that's fair. True. <laughs> I, had, I slept on them so hard. Dude, you did sleep on them bad. <laughs> Cam like, was telling me, he's like, dude, I was no. like, brother, good, man. You were like, no. You'll see. Michigan <laughs> going to beat them about 100. Yep. And no, it didn't happen. But so. Yeah, you gotta you gotta at least root them on a little bit. That's yeah. fair. Um, but yeah, this is like the first time since what 2017 Gonzaga's not been like the most hyped up team. Yeah, and they went to the Final Four. I, li- I like the spot that they're in because the, I feel like Mark Few. He they can, went to the he Natty, can, I think, that year. 2017, yeah. Lost to UNC. UNC, yeah. But yeah, this is like you said the first time like ever that they're yeah. not extremely hyped up and expected to do a ton. And I feel like that's that's a spot that they want to be in, and that's the spot they're in right now. Yeah. So then, the bottom of that, uh, or wait, no, we've got one more. Uh, Northwestern as a seven seed versus Boise State. So that also backs up uh, the Big Ten and the seven ten matchups never lost. Yes, I like I feel like Northwestern's the one to beat that, though. It's like their second time ever making the tournament. They're the one to break that streak. Yeah. Uh, Boise's in the Mountain, Mountain West. So this is like the worst of worst scenarios for a draft, or for a bracket. Yeah. Because it's going against both of their. Well, no, the, no, no. Northwestern is seven. Big Ten is seven and zero. Oh, whenever they're seven seed. Yeah, I know. So, but if you pick them, oh, so you're going with Northwestern? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was just saying Northwestern. It, they suck. Oh no, they're really bad. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just saying, I think their second one ever. So like, yeah. I don't want to pick them, but they had, they they had a they had fun like yeah, they had a good like month stretch. Yeah, and uh, the one what's this the dude with the funny name uh, Kuma or Gubu? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Uh, Gubu. I can't think of his name. Yeah. But they did have a, a good stretch in like January. Which they did. At they, the, they were fun for a little bit. Yeah, cool uniforms too. I do like the uniforms. But yeah, and I like that they've taken on more of a Chicago role. Um, yeah, Booey Boo, Boo yep. Boo Boo Booey. That is that's it, Boo Booey. Um, but who do you have in this one, Coach? I have Northwestern as well. I actually have Boise State, mm. so I'm going against it. And okay. Northwestern of anybody is going to break that seven and zero streak. Uh, but lastly, two seed UCLA. Versus 15 seed UNC Asheville. UNC Asheville. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going UCLA. I'm, I'm not going but UCLA. I'm not going UCLA. Really? Yeah. yeah you Let's know, hear it. Let's hear it. Uh, UNC Asheville, they average 40% from deep. And that the, wins tournament game. What's the that, recipe, what's the recipe for a Cinderella true. story? The team that can shoot the lights out. They average 40% from three. They have a dude who averages 45% from three. And then they have another dude who, that's not even the leading scorer. The leading scorer averages 21 and 9, 21 points, 9 rebounds oh a game. Gosh. And on top of all this, they're the luckiest team in Kim Pom. Lucky, and lucky helps. It's March. Lucky does it's all luck. luck. Yep. A little bit of skill, <laughs> but, you know, it's not all luck. And UCLA, defender, gone. Yeah, Jalen Clark. So. True. He's their this, best transition guard and true. best defending guard. But I mean, UCLA still. They, I mean, they they played well against Arizona. Um, they did. But I don't know. I just like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's also a lot of people's like favorite to win it all. But straight up from Austin, Texas, there hasn't been a team west of it win a championship since '97. So yeah. I think it keeps and I feel like a lot of it. teams are a lot of people are going to have Colgate if they had to pick a 15 seed, but. That's that's why I like UNC Asheville because they're kind of you know they're kind of under the radar. Yeah, I feel like if they if they get hot from three, then please let this happen. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I if it happens, if it happens, I hope this. I'm happens. a genius. If it doesn't happen, oh well. Respect the decision, you know. Yeah, I went respect, out on a limb. Respect it. Oh, yeah, and Colgate's like the one fifteen. No? <laughs> Colgate's like the one fifteen people have heard of. So I'm yeah, gonna... you. UNC Asheville, they have a little, you know, they go on. St. Peter's, nobody thought St. Peter's was going to win. Yep. Nobody thought Florida Gulf Coast was going to win. True. Nobody thought Oral Roberts was going to win. Yep. And guess what? All those teams can shoot. UNC Asheville can shoot. Col- so can Colgate, but, you know, they're, they're up I don't there. even know what St. Peter's, like, St. Peter's could shoot a little bit, but, like, they were just, like, they were good. Yeah, they were they, just they, good they, at basketball. Yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. So, I'm not going to bring that up too much, but, like, they no, were we just we good. We don't need to. They were the best 15 ever, though, so there will never be another. But They went to the Elite Eight. So, out of those, we're not going to break down every game. 
Who do we have in the final four? Who do you like in in uh, from the south? Uh, from the <laughs> from the south, I have Creighton. Creighton. So Creighton over at Bama. I, uh, no, Creighton over at College of Charleston. All right. Elite Let's eight. See this real quick. All right. So. Okay. Oh yeah, I have Bama. Bama, safe. Yep, yep safe pick. All right. Who do we have from the east? Uh, the east. Oh, I have Alabama. By the way. Um, I think it's Hart, Kentucky. Um. Mind, I don't want to say it, but it could be Duke. Uh, They're just so hot right now. Yeah. Dude, that's how I am. Yeah. You've got Duke. And I I feel like this is the region that's just so wide open that anything can happen. But, I mean, it if, could be Memphis. Yeah. If any region, it's like somebody. Could be anybody. Yeah, it's this region. Uh, My heart says Tennessee. I mean. You know, obviously. Or to but, on a limb there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Thank you. Uh, but no, it's like, I'll probably put Duke in there. Maybe Purdue is not as bad or something. Maybe, Maybe they Purdue's just... not going to the Final Four, I promise. Hey, you don't? I... Matt Painter doesn't win that late. No, Matt Painter does yeah. not win. <laughs> He's got stuff to do late March. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. Like, you go like, on fishing trips in late March. Yeah. True. It's True. starting to get warm. He doesn't want to coach anymore. Yeah, this region, it could be... It's gonna be a, it's gonna be some good yeah. basketball play. I think South will be fun and this one will be exciting because this one is like. But in my bracket, happen. in my bracket, I got Kentucky. Yeah, but so in my brackets, I have Kentucky in some of them. Going but then. On a limb there. <laughs> <laughs> but in this one, uh, I actually have Marquette because I want it to be a uh, Marquette Duke matchup in the Elite Eight, and then I just want the first year coach. Everybody starts to hype him up. And then he loses in the Elite Eight. They're like, he's, he's a first-year coach going to the, uh-huh. the Elite Eight. Is he going to match what Coach K did? And then everybody, like, they get hype. Yeah, I have a problem with going with first-year coaches. Yeah. So I, I do want Marquette to win that. And, I mean, I just like how they play. So uh, I've got Kentucky, Marquette. Kentucky out of that. Marquette and Marquette and Madison Square Garden would be a lot of fun. Yeah, it would. Uh, but I just did the, the whole, like, reverse psychology thing where it was like, Marquette's going to make it. So then, if Kentucky goes farther, I'm happy because obviously Kentucky's winning. But if I have Kentucky all the way and then they lose early, then I'm really hurt. So yeah. it's just kind of like the the win win thing here. Yeah, so, the exact opposite. I got Kentucky winning the national championship. But yeah, that's fun. Well, 95 percent of my brackets have Kentucky just because you know that's the realistic thing. Uh, then we've got <laughs> then we've got the Midwest. So I'm actually taking Texas out. I also of this. have Texas. Who do you like out here? Me as well. Texas. 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 I have Texas and Houston playing in the Elite Eight. And it sucks for me. My one rule is that you don't pick conference champions, and that's three conference champions that I've got in my Final Four right now. It's tough. So yep. uh, then out of the West. Six out of the last eight champions have not won their conference tournament. Yeah. And Kansas was one, but then what well, was the But with statistics, Kentucky's not going to win the championship, so we'll just shy away from the statistics. Yeah, statistics aren't real. Yeah. Uh, out of the West, I actually have UConn. Me Damn too, Hurley. Me too. I like UConn. Who do you like here? Oh, dang! My bracket. I just realized how cliche my bracket is. Fun. You have Kansas. I have Kansas. Yes. So you have. <laughs> you have one <laughs> five one two. Oh wait, one. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> oh wait, okay. Yeah, you have one five two one. Yeah. So you have two ones. Um, it could happen. But yeah, five of the last five national champions were one seeds. Yeah, I mean, I do have... Um, I don't have a single one seed in my Final Four. But I don't like the one seeds this year. That is true. Uh, Bama is the style that where they can, like, you know... Bama could beat anybody by 50. If we're going with, like, realistic, Bama is probably going to win the national championship. Which is crazy. Yeah. Because that would be the third SEC team, or fourth SEC team to ever win a natty. Yeah, they're they're the best team in the country. Yeah, and they also actually play good defense, which is rare for like good they offenses. Can, they can shoot really well too. Yeah, on and off. Yeah, on and off the court. Um, so, yeah, that that is that is. Um, they don't take much charges either. <laughs> yeah, that is facts. Um, but I think I think Bama oh, is, is the the safest pick. <laughs> uh, oh, man. but yeah, they 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 do score a lot. They score in a hurry, and I just feel like. If they play at least half of what their potential is, they could beat any team in their region and yeah. make the Final Four. Uh, but then in the championship, I also have Bama going and losing to Texas. 
And with the first year coach thing, I have Rodney winning it all with his beautiful glasses standing on the, the throne. So, who do you all like in the championship? I mean, in this bracket, I've got Kentucky, but actually, I'd really like UConn to win the national championship. That'd be yeah. number five for yeah. UConn. Yeah, I like UConn. Um, they're fun to watch. I like the Big East. The Big East is so much fun. The Big East plays the way the basketball is supposed to be played. And Dan Hurley is a lot of fun to watch on the sidelines. So Yeah, Dan Hurley's awesome. Yeah. Who do you like here? You have Bama. Uh, yeah, I have Bama. Um, who, do they, who do they beat in them? I just feel like they're so dominant. Um, yeah. They just don't play any games close. Yeah. I think it's going to be two powerhouses in the national championship this year. Kansas and Bama. Bama takes it. And um, uh, Nate Oates. He also did beat that Arizona team with DeAndre Ayton when he was at Buffalo. But then got smacked by Kentucky. So Yeah. I mean, so maybe he wins and loses in March. So it's it's a 50-50 thing. Yeah, actually, the other day I was like, wait. I was looking it up and I was like, I know he was at Buffalo. And I was like, he had to be there when we when Hamadou and Shea's team played him. And I was like, yep, sure enough, I just went and watched the game. NATO, it's posted up on the sideline. So <laughs> he was there. But, yep, Alabama loses to Texas, Longhorns. Or, uh, that'd be three straight, which you gave me the stat that's never yeah. happened. Or it's happened once. It's happened once. Duke won back-to-back, and then North Carolina won. Yeah, so having the three straight Big, big 12 isn't in my favor. Right, so, right, right. Uh, I hope – I don't I don't want the Big 12 to win. I don't either because, I mean, they're they're obviously, like, the best in basketball right now, but I don't want them to have the champions too. Right. Like, I just don't want that. But I just like Texas. They're very deep too, and I like how they play. Yeah. Uh, they're good. Yeah, they're they're very good, and I feel like they they didn't necessarily take a drop once the whole Chris Beard thing. Happened. I think they got better. Yeah, I think they actually did. Rodney get Terry is a, a legit, legitimately good coach. Yeah, Rodney Terry's legit. So I have Texas winning it all, and you have Alabama, Alabama, and Kentucky uh, slash <laughs> Kentucky <laughs> slash UConn slash Arizona slash blah blah. Yeah, it's like so you saying Tennessee slash Bama. Well, you could say Tennessee. Slash you can Bama. say it. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> say it. Say it. Just say it one, one time. Heart for says Tennessee. There it is. <laughs> yeah, so it's Kentucky slash Texas for me. But uh, yeah, so y'all have any any last things or any like insane stats that we're forgetting, Sam? Uh, no, I'm excited. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. I, I say we actually go to one of the the South games because they're in Louisville in the yeah. Sweet Sixteen in the Elite Eight. We'll, we'll, that would be fun. We'll talk later. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll talk later. Money, on money's tight. Yeah, you know, I got this, you know. <laughs> yeah, what's yes, going stuff on? going on. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I think it's going to be awesome. And this is, like, the first year where I've actually paid attention to who some of these bad teams are because this is the, the most I've ever been locked in in college basketball. So, I'm hyped for it. I'm excited. It's March, and March brings excitement. So, I'm excited. Yeah. It brings excitement and sometimes... Uh, Heartbreak. Oh, always brings heartbreak. It's yeah. death taxes and being heartbroken in March. <laughs> yep. Three things guaranteed. Uh, yep. So, all right, what, real, real quick. What, what do you think of my proposal that the Elite Eight should have a three-game series, Final Four should have a five-game series, f- a championship should have be a seven-game I, series? This is the first time I'm ever hearing of this, and I hate it. You hate it? Oh, big time. But what do you... Yeah, it's too much like NBA... Yeah, that's the, yeah, but the best team usually never wins. That's, kind of, that's, that's, what's, that's, what's so, that's what's so good about March. Is but like anybody can. That win. adds to the absolute heartbreak and destroying coaches' legacies when they've been so great the whole year. One bad game ruins their. And that's 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 why March Madness is March Madness. That's yeah, but March I feel like it, madness. Yeah, but I feel like. All right, so most of the huge upsets are before this, the Elite Eight, anyways. Most of those are like, wow, they lost that early. So I think if it once you get to that elite eight, it's like good teams, but maybe like a, a mid team beats a good team because it's a one game scenario. I would rather that good team make it, and then you have a game game seven. I'm all in the for, national I'm championship. All for like, I'm, I'm, the 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 upsets are fun in the first round, but once we get to the Sweet Sixteen, I do like the good teams to be in there and like you know good good basketball games being played. Yeah, but there's nothing better than like. Because even if you have, like, Alabama and Virginia, that's, like, two powerhouses. If Alabama hits a game winner, it's over. That's it. Virginia's done. I like that. I, that needs to stay. Yeah, but, so, all right, what about, the, like, the scenario of, like, John Wall, that that team, when they played West Virginia, they had never played in that arena that entire year. The shooting was bad they, because they of their depth against, perception. They played against Cornell there. 
Oh, oh yeah, they played. Uh, so that was their second game. But West Virginia is used to that arena. Is my point. They're used to it. They they also John Wall's team did get screwed in that because West Virginia won the Big East regular season and the conference championship, and then Duke didn't win the ACC conference championship, and Duke got a one, and they, West Virginia got a two. But that that was ridiculous in its own way. But I think in a three game series, that like that team, John Wall's team is better. That yeah, Kentucky I mean, team is better. It sucks that we lost, but like you lost in the game, so it's like that's what March Madness is. It's what it's always been. You can't. I don't think you can change that. But it it, it just sucks because all it takes oh, is it one slip time. up. But that's that's why it's so great. Yeah. Yeah, but so, I, I do think it, it's because that would be kind of like how the MLB does it. The best team usually wins in the MLB, nearly every year. It'll but be it's three, col- like, five, seven. College sports and professional sports need to stay different. Thanks. And yeah, MLB baseball is like completely different. You got like different pitchers and stuff. Yeah, I mean, but so the finals in the NBA is also always like the best teams. Yeah, most of the time. Because okay, so in that situation, the Warriors in 2017, first year with KD, lost Game One to the Pelicans. So in the March Madness scenario, they'd be out. Yeah, that's why college sports is different. NBA, I do like how they do it because I feel like in the NBA, like it's a Long season, you know the teams are like different. Like there's there's gaps in the teams. Col- I mean, there's major gaps in teams, and that's why college sports is like college sports is much better. Yeah, and I think I think it, that's why it's so much more exciting because if you lose, the, you're done. Yeah, you got the underdog gotta, beat somebody, and they're like, oh, we gotta play again, even though we just made the biggest upset. You gotta bring it. You still have to beat them every game a, another time. You know what I mean? Yeah. See, and I'm not one for change, and I actually don't want that. But I see I see a point behind it. But I also think if you're truly the best team, you figure out a way to score yeah. the ball without needing, like say if it's Alabama and you're not hitting threes, you should be good enough to where you don't have to hit threes to be yeah. able to beat certain teams. And it's like the last five t- championship winners have been one seed, so it's like the best teams do win it. But there's sure. only like the best team in the regular season right. The best team right now is Alabama. Will Alabama win it all? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, but with. They've they been one to. seeds, but I don't think they were truly the best team in the tournament. Like, in a lot of the years. Yeah. Recently. But also, like, I don't, I don't know if the tournament's, like, it's the best team in six games. And, yeah. And that's why it's so great, because you have to play six games. It's six games. You have to win them all. The most consistent team in six yeah. games, too. And anything, anything can happen in one game, and it's like, that's why... Like, if you play six-game six series, five-game series, seven-game series, Kennesaw State's not, got no chance against Xavier. Yeah, but that's also a first round, so that's only one game anyways in that scenario. Yeah. And also, I think it would just draw it out. and people. I feel like it would turn a lot of people off. Yeah. But I also think that summer sucks because you have, like, nothing. Like, yeah, after the finals. And that drags that farther. And I think it's just, like, awesome. It's less time got, like, to be just depressed. Thing. I just don't think that... Yeah, and they're out of school, so it's cool. Like, they're just, they, I don't think they could, They can't play then. Why not? It, yeah, it's not, I don't think that's ever going to happen. No, it won't happen ever, but... I don't want it to happen either. I mean, I'm like 50-50 on it, because I can see both sides. Yeah. I mean, I also, like it because it's so unique. With, like, tournament expansion? That's stupid. That, that's, that's actually... Because that, that takes away any point of a team making a tournament. And it's not as sweet... As impressive, like, I yeah. don't know. You have, like, if you have, like, the 13th seed in the Big Ten making the tournament, it's like, what are we doing here? If yeah. Ohio State were to make the tournament this season, they were terrible. Yeah. They shouldn't make the tournament. Like, what's the fun, like, what's the joy in making the tournament if it's 120 teams? Yeah. Yeah, and, and you went, like, you won, you won, like, five games in your conference, and then you made the tournament, and you're yeah. like, we don't even deserve to be here. Like, yeah. Uh, but, but then again... If you get hot, you can... Yeah. Ohio State nearly did get hot. Yeah, they, they, they made a push for the tournament. They yeah, fell short. They did. Um, but, yeah, I guess that, that's it for me for this one, this year's edition of the March Madness uh, special. But The cats can't disappoint. <laughs> the cats cannot. Sam, thanks for coming. It's been yeah, a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you for all the insane stats that, that we yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, thank you all for tuning in to another podcast. Uh, comment who y'all's champion is below. Follow the Instagram. Y'all have a great rest of the week. Enjoy the March Madness games. 
and peace out. See ya.